Here we go again, Android P. You probably heard the news by now, you know, Android's newest update. Well, I've been rocking it for a couple days now on my Google Pixel, and while I can't say I discovered every little new feature within this huge release, I am familiar with the essentials, and thanks to my good friends over at Android Police, I will also be showing you some of the smaller new hidden features that they have found so far. Let's take a quick look. So right off the bat, without touching anything, you'll already notice a few changes. The timing in the status bar is now to the left. The app drawer now has a glass dock with the shadow effect, which also stays put when you long press on the wallpaper. There's a microphone in the search bar to launch voice assistant. And the page slash scroll indicator is now tucked within the shaded dock. That's all for the launcher. If you want to try it out, I'll drop a link to the Pixel Launcher APK right below that like button. The next thing you'll probably do is scroll down the notification bar to reveal the quick settings toggles, and of course your notifications. If you haven't already noticed, everything is round, including your notifications, toggles with the enabled ones having a blue circle around them if you have a Pixel device, and at the very top, the background is black to display the time, date, and battery. The idea of making everything round is very controversial. I don't mind it too much, but I will say that it does feel like a third-party theme that you can download from the Play Store. For example, it looks very similar to a Substratum theme called Flux White. What I'm looking forward to is smart replies and attached inline photos when you receive a message though. This is thanks to a new notification type that developers can use in Android P to provide new awesome features within their messaging apps. Definitely excited for that. For the quick settings panel, all of your tiles are now on one page as vertical scrolling is the new chosen method for navigation. You no longer have to swipe side by side just to find a single tile. I'm all in for this change, but I am bummed out that the tiles are no longer expandable. I guess it's back to long pressing. The coolest thing in this update though is the volume controls. They've now been moved to the side of the screen just like the power menu in Android 8.1 following the position of the volume rocker. There's also a second square beneath the slider and tapping on it will cycle between the ringer modes known as ring, vibrate, and mute. If you tap on the arrows, a menu will slide out to let you quickly view your connected Bluetooth devices or connect them and disconnect them. I also wanted to mention that with this update, the volume buttons now control the media volume by default and not the ringer volume for when you receive a phone call. You can still configure each one in the sound settings, which can be easily opened by pressing on the second square, but in my opinion, the three modes is enough for most of us anyways. Lastly, the power menu has a new button named Screenshot, which, if you haven't already guessed, takes screenshots. Though you can still take one by holding down the power and volume down button at the same time, just in case if you're wondering. And before I move on to the next topic, there is a fourth mysterious button that you can enable in the settings under lock screen preferences called lockdown. I'm not sure why this is a feature, but this just lets you lock your phone, and once it does, fingerprints aren't accepted as a sign-in method. Only your pin, password, or pattern. Once you unlock it, you have to tap it again to go through that process again. It's probably not finished yet, so I wouldn't enable it just to save that extra space. Anyways, let's jump into the settings. Right from the get-go, you'll notice that the icons are now colorful and the search bar is rounded. I can see why they added that splash of color. It adds more differentiation between each block of text, but this is another controversial move. The menus themselves still look the same, but there are a couple new features and modifications that were slipped in. Let's start with the developer options. In this menu, there's a new setting called Feature Flags, which holds a list of experimental features, sort of like Chrome's hidden flag menu, but less descriptive. Most of them were already enabled by default, while there are a few that weren't. The one labeled Settings About Phone V2 gives you a different looking interface when you hop into the About Phone menu, and the one labeled Settings Bluetooth While Driving automatically enables Bluetooth while you're driving. It's not clear what every single one does, but if you want to know what most of them do, then I'll drop a link to an article explaining them. In the location section, the menu where you can modify the GPS accuracy is now thrown to the bottom and is also a binary choice of on and off. Turning it on is like having it on high accuracy and off means only GPS is used which was previously known as device only. The GPS battery saving mode was merged with the high accuracy mode because apps can't access the GPS unless they're in the foreground for privacy reasons. While we're on the topic, idle apps within Android P won't be able to access the microphone or camera either. I'm surprised they haven't done this yet, but I'm glad they added this in. Under the Wi-Fi settings, you can now meter a Wi-Fi network much easier instead of having to find it within the data saver settings. This will stop background processes from occurring, such as Play Store updates, so you won't gobble up a few hundred megabytes when connected to your friend's hotspot or a limited network. Do Not Disturb mode has once again been modified, and this time it has been simplified. When you toggle it in the quick settings, it now only performs the old default action for duration selection, and pressing the volume down key no longer enables it. Within the settings, you still have similar configurations, but rule-based differences are no longer possible. In other words, you can still set rules, but only for enabling Do Not Disturb mode for specific days of the week or events. 
If we take a look at the battery section, it no longer has the per app battery usage data, but you can access them within the developer options under C Android 8.0 battery settings, which is a bit weird and probably temporary. Lastly, battery saver can now be scheduled to automatically turn on from anywhere between 5% and 70% battery, a pretty big difference from the 5 to 15% options in Android Oreo. In the notification settings, you can now easily track which of your apps have recently sent notifications. There are three new themes within display with two of them letting you have a virtual notch at the top, there's no longer a system UI tuner within the settings. The demo mode displays a time 1010, which could be a reference to the Android P version, but don't quote me on that. You can change the strength of the touch vibration and turn off the vibration in general when you receive a phone call or notification within the accessibility settings. And the Easter egg is extremely colorful, trippy, and changes colors each time you open it. That's all I got for the features within the settings. Now I'm going to do a speed run of all the small features throughout the interface that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Starting with the screenshots, you can now mark them up, but this only works on the Pixel 2 and 2XL. There are some sweet new transition animations when you switch apps or switch an activity. When you don't have auto rotate enabled and you turn the device to landscape or portrait, a small button will show up in the navigation bar offering to change the rotation. The text selection shows a more precise zoom lens. The unlock pattern now fades out as you swipe. The nightlight tile now tells you when it'll turn on if you have a schedule for it. Ambient display now centers your notifications and shows you your current battery percentage towards the bottom. You have charging sounds. The alarm tile shows you upcoming alarms. Adaptive brightness animates the quick setting slider as it changes. And lastly, the USB menu is now a full-fledged menu instead of a pop-up when you connect your device to your desktop. Those are most of the big and small changes found so far in Android P. This is the first release, so keep in mind that all these features can change or be removed in a future update. And I also don't recommend using this as your main driver just yet because you do have a high chance of experiencing bugs and force closes. But if you like to live life on the edge and happen to have a Pixel or Pixel 2 lying around, then I'll drop a link right below the like button to download and flash the image as you won't be able to sign up for the beta program just yet. Either way, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a huge thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think Android P will be named. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!